we're going to make him an offer he can't refuse. In this video, we're going to look at a very important scene. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. It marks the turning point for our lead character, when Michael Corleone takes his first steps towards becoming the Godfather. How does director Francis Ford Coppola turn words on a page into truly powerful cinema? Business, not personal. They shot my father. Through the unspoken dance between the actors and the camera, blocking and staging. If you want to get more of these videos on blocking and staging, make sure to subscribe below and click the bell icon to stay in the loop. Let's jump in. The term blocking refers to how characters move through a scene and interact with their environment. Staging is the placement and the movement of the camera and scene elements. When blocking and staging work together in harmony, it means the difference between watching a functional scene or a subtext-rich visual story. Tamanooch! Hey! This is a pivotal scene in Michael Corleone's character arc. It marks the beginning of his transition from a passive non-participant... That's my family, Kate. It's not me. ...to ultimately becoming the head of the Corleone family. Let's see how he does it. What's with all the new faces? We'll need them now. After the hospital thing, Sonny got mad. We hit Bruno to tell you four o'clock this morning. Jesus Christ. Tamanooch! This scene begins on Sonny bragging about his retaliation against the Tatalia family. Hey, a hundred button men on the street 24 hours a day. That Turk shows one hair on his ass, he's dead. Believe me. Hey. hey, Michael, come here. Let me look at you. This scene is all about the transfer of power from Sonny to Michael. At this point, Michael essentially drops out of the scene, sitting in a chair off to the side. The turd, he wants to talk. You got to imagine a nerve on his son of a bitch, eh? Craps out last night, he wants a meeting today. With Michael out of the conversation, Coppola gives us our first important composition. Sonny, we ought to hear what they have to say. No, no. No, no more. Not this time, Consigliere. No more meetings, no more discussions, no more Salazzo tricks. You give him one message, I want Salazzo. Coppola creates a visual division between the two sides of the argument. Sonny occupies a dominant position in the middle of the room, with Clemenza and Tessio on Sonny's side. Sonny is in control. Tom is against the ropes. Not it's all out war. We go to the Some of the other families won't sit still. They hear me, Salazzo. Your father would want to hear this. This is business, not personal. They shot my father. Even the shooting of your father was business, not personal, Sonny. Well, then business will have to suffer. All right. Coppola repositions the camera, and he reframes Michael in this frame. Then, Sonny walks around and sits down at Don Corleone's desk, perhaps as a gesture to let Tom and everyone else know that he is in charge. But now it's Tom's turn to corner Sonny. Payroll and for big money. Eh? Kluski has agreed to be the Turk's bodyguard. What you have to understand, Sonny, is that while Salazzo is being guarded like this, he is invulnerable. Now, nobody has ever gunned down a New York police captain, never. It would be disastrous. All the five families would come after you, Sonny. The Corleone family would be outcast. Even the old man's political protection would run for cover. That's when Coppola cuts to this shot. Our first real look at Sonny during this exchange is saved for the moment he is beaten. He looks at Tom with respect for perhaps the first time in his life. So do me a favor. Take this into consideration. All right, wait. Satisfied, Tom walks back across the room, leading our eyes back to Michael. 
Then Michael does what no one expects him to do. He speaks. I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't care what Soletso says about a deal. He's going to kill Pop. That's it. That's a key for him. Got to get Soletso. Mike is right. Even Sonny comes back from around the desk for this unprecedented moment. Well, let me ask you something, Professor. I mean, what about this McCluskey? Huh? What do we do with this copy? Despite being seated, Michael has now taken control of the room. They want to have a meeting with me, right? It will be me, McCluskey, and Soletso. Let's set the meeting. As Michael begins to describe his plan, the camera slowly pushes in. Get our informers to find out where it's going to be held. Now we insist it's a public place, a bar, a restaurant, some place where there's people so I feel safe. They're going to search me when I first meet them, right? So I can't have a weapon on me then. But if Clemenza can figure a way to have a weapon planted there for me, then I'll kill them both. Let's set the meeting. This camera move achieves two things at once. Both the viewer and the other characters are being drawn into his plan, and Michael's confidence grows. Now we insist it's a public place, a bar, a restaurant, some place where there's people, so I feel safe. Michael transforms in front of our eyes, from a passive bystander to a leader. And eventually, Coppola lands in this frame for Michael's most important line. But if Clemenza can figure a way to have a weapon planted there for me, then I'll kill them both. <laughs> Sonny is condescending, treating him like a child who he doesn't take seriously. They want to get mixed up in the family business? Huh? Now you want to gun down a police captain why? Because he slapped you in the face a little bit? Huh? Notice the body language and the dominant position Sonny takes. Sonny recognizes his little brother's potential for leadership and is threatened by it. What do you think, this is the army where you shoot them a mile away? You gotta get up close like this, and bing you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league suit. Come in. Mwah! You're taking us very personal. Tom? But Michael doesn't give in to his brother's dismissal. Very personal. Where does it say that you can't kill a cop? Here, we only cut between Michael and Tom. If Michael is able to convince Tom, he's won. Come on, Mikey. Tom, wait a minute, I'm talking about a cop that's mixed up in drugs. I'm talking about a, a, a dishonest cop a crooked cop who got mixed up in the rackets and got what was coming to him. That's a terrific story. And we have newspaper people on the payroll, don't we, Tom? They might like a story like that. They might. They just might. And what does Coppola do to indicate Michael's victory? He reframes Michael in a close-up, larger and more powerful than we've ever seen him. It's not personal, son. It's strictly business. To recap, in this scene from The Godfather, Coppola uses blocking and staging to show Sonny's loss of power and Michael's first step towards leadership. What do you see in this scene? Do you agree with our assessment or do you have your own interpretation? Tell us in the comments. If you're planning a scene with elaborate blocking and staging, it's helpful to use a shot list or storyboard to map it out. Check the description to sign up for Studio Binder. It's free to get started. The next time you plan out your blocking and staging, follow Coppola's lead and make subtle but purposeful choices. There's no need to beat your audience over the head. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Click the bell icon for notifications.